Let's go now to live pictures of Donald Trump on the campaign trail, addressing his adoring supporters in we will Arizona. We teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. He's been on for 45 minutes, still going strong, but one man who's not cheering is former FBI counterintelligence officer Peter Strzok. Uh, Peter, good morning to you. Um, you worked on the infamous Russia probe and led the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails, and you have some concerns it could all happen again. Um, what most worries you about Donald Trump? Uh, well, good morning, and thanks for having me. Uh, there are a number of things that worry me, but first and foremost are a couple of things. One, his financial entanglements with foreign nations that until now have not been known to the public. Um, thanks to some really good reporting by the New York Times and other U.S. media, they've uncovered a vast financial empire where both uh, President Trump is receiving millions upon millions of hidden dollars from foreign nations while he's been the president, and in fact owes well over $420 million that will come due during the next potential term as president. Uh, the other thing that I see that's really concerning is uh, the exact same thing that happened in 2016. And that is Trump and his administration's willingness to use Russian disinformation to his advantage on the campaign trail. And that's not me saying that. That's members of his own intelligence community right now saying that Russia is actively planting disinformation that he is using against uh, Joe Biden. Hey, I mean, you're making some pretty damning allegations here. If what you say is correct about receiving money from foreign powers, you're basically saying the U.S. president is corrupt. Well, I think it's more than corrupt. I think when you think of corruption, that's more in terms of sort of an ethical basis or perhaps a criminal sort of violation. But I come at this from a counterintelligence perspective. And I worked for over 20 years both recruiting spies to work for the, the United States and our allies, as well as defending against the Russians and the Chinese who were trying to recruit those people within our government. And this is more than corruption. This represents leverage that a foreign power, a hostile foreign power like Russia, can use against the president, can use against the United States to achieve their aims. How much does it vex you um, that no matter how much uh, you and others like you go on about Trump and what he's done wrong and how corrupt he is and, and how bad he is for the world and America, that it doesn't seem to have any effect? Well, it's tremendously troubling. I mean, I think people, rational people, logical people who stand back and look at this can see the sort of grave trouble that this presents. I think, at least certainly in the United States, we have a tendency to get caught up in the outrage of the moment. And however bad something is today, inevitably there seems to be something tomorrow that is even worse and takes our mind off it. But I do think in the long run that people will take a step back and we'll see exactly the problems that were present in this presidency and hopefully won't we'll write the problems that have been exposed over the past four years. So are you suggesting that Russia will be meddling in this election? Oh, not only suggesting, but that they are. And look, again, the, the current director of the FBI, uh, Director Ray, the members of the uh, U.S. intelligence community have said publicly in statements to Congress as well as to the media that they are certain that Russia right now is actively uh, involving themselves not only in the election, but involving themselves in a way that is uh, intended to hurt uh, candidate Biden and therefore necessarily help President Trump. So that's that's a given. That's been stated by members of the current U.S. administration. So the president, um, well, he doesn't really like you that much. Um, he calls you <laughs> a, a minion. He calls you a, a sick loser. Uh, he's accused you of treason. Uh, how do you respond to such accusations? Oh, well, they're obviously false. I mean, this is the sort of uh, behaviour you'd expect from an eight-year-old on the playground or perhaps some drunk in a bar. It's not the behaviour we, at least <laughs> until for the past four years, have expected from the United States president. So... I mean, it's clearly false. I think anybody who looks at the way he sort of talks about me, talks about other members of the uh, of the U.S. government, sometimes talks about women. I mean, he clearly engages in a certain amount of buffoonery that certainly isn't becoming uh, of the, the office of the president of the United States. I mean, he does manage to get away with things that we've seen no one else get away with before. But what about Joe Biden? Because there are ongoing questions about him, about his son Hunter and his ties to the Ukraine. Is that of concern to you? Oh, well, what concerns me is the foreign involvement. I mean, look, politics in the U.S. is like politics in Australia. It can be dirty. It can be very rough and tumble. But what should never happen is that there should not be a hostile foreign nation that is involved in this process. So when I see Russia, you know, when I see uh, Ukrainian uh, folks affiliated with Russia actually taking state disinformation 
and providing that to domestic political actors, that's entirely unacceptable. That's nothing that any counterintelligence professional should want. And frankly, it's not anything any citizen of a Western democracy should want either. We're just uh, watching the president now on the stage. <laughs> I think we've got a little sound up here of, of the traditional music he plays at this, this time of uh, his particular speeches. Here we go. So Peter, um, how do you feel uh, and, uh, and how do you feel about him potentially doing another four years? Will he win? Well, you know, I watched that and I'm reminded of Boris Yeltsin up on the stage dancing a jig. And I think he probably had about half a bottle of vodka in him at the time wow. he did it to show how strong he was. Oh, look, I, I'm very worried that another four years are going to do deep and lasting damage to the United States government. Uh, the professionals in the U.S. intelligence community across the U.S. government have sworn an oath through the Constitution that they've done a very mm. good job under a lot of stress over the past four years to maintain their objectivity. But I'm very worried this sort of cracking and crumbling around the edges that we've seen over this past four years, that another four years of Donald Trump is really going to do very, very deep damage to our government. Well, there you go, Peter. We really appreciate you coming on this morning. And um, you can never rule out Donald Trump doing another four years. Thank you. And Peter's book, <laughs> Compromised, Great. is out December 1 and 9 more tonight. Air a special presentation, The Trump Show, which is at 8.40pm. That is a great watch too. Make sure mm. you tune in.